Good afternoon, and welcome to Beakers and Ink presentation of elements, compounds, chemical formulas, and equations. If you have the notes printed out in front of you, follow along and fill in as you go. If you don't have the notes, you can just take your own or just pay attention very closely. Elements, compounds, chemical formulas, and equations. Elements. Elements are a pure substance made of one type of atom. It cannot be broken down any farther. So for example, any one type of atom, if you have more of them, you just have more of that substance. It is all the same. Here, our elephant is made mostly of gray Legos. If we just talk about the gray Legos, they're all the same. They're all the same type of atom. The element neon is made only of neon atoms. Signs like these have different types of gases in them, one of them being neon and they would all be neon atoms on the inside. Gold, if it's pure, is only made of gold atoms. So if I just have less of those atoms, I just have less gold. The more atoms, the more gold. How are elements different from each other? Elements differ by their number of protons. Carbon has six protons. In this picture, we can see a piece of coal, which is carbon. Copper has 29 protons. Here is a coin. In the United States, a penny is covered in copper. The elements are organized on the periodic table of elements. So all of these are in very specific order according to how they react with other elements and how they react um, in different situations. Elements can be represented by symbols. There's two rules for writing symbols. Number one, you always capitalize the first letter. So for carbon, a big uppercase C, and for nitrogen, uppercase N. Rule number two is, if there's a second letter, it's always lowercase. For example, chlorine is big C and a little l. We do need to be careful that we realize that this is a little l and not an uppercase I. So when you do write uppercase I's, make sure you have the crossbars across the top and the bottom. Sodium is an uppercase N and a little a. Where do elements get their names? Some elements get their names from Latin or Greek words. Copper, for example, was cuprum, and that's Greek, and the symbol CU for that original name. Iron is ferrum, that's Latin, and the symbol is FE from that original name. Lead, palumbum, is Latin, and its symbol is PB. So there are going to be a few elements that seem to not have quite the same symbol as what the name that we use here in the United States. We drink water, we breathe out carbon dioxide. We use salt in our foods. What do these substances have in common? They're all compounds. Where are these elements found? Elements are rarely found in nature in their pure form. They're usually found in compounds. So what is a compound? It's two or more elements that are chemically combined. Salt is NaCl, that's sodium and chlorine. Water, one that everybody knows, is H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. And carbon dioxide, what we breathe out every day as we breathe, is carbon and oxygen. When elements combine to make a compound, the new substance has properties that are different from the original. You could have something that gives you a new color, an odor, or a different texture. I think about things like if I take a match and I burn it, there's a lot of odor given off when that match is ignited. It's very strong. So that smoke is actually different from the original match. The ashes that are left behind have a different texture than what the match had and also a different color. So these were some clues that we actually made some new compounds. We'll talk about that later when we talk about equations. 
element or compound. Here's some practice. You may want to pause your screen and go ahead and see if you can do these on yourself, and then we'll review. Methane, CH4. Is that an element or a compound? Compound. Sulfur, S8. Element or compound? Element. It's all one type of atom. It's just sulfur. The methane before had two different elements in it, carbon and hydrogen. What about hydrogen peroxide, H2O2? Compound. Notice we have hydrogen and oxygen together. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Element or compound? Compound. It looks like you're getting this. Notice we have hydrogen, that's one element. We have sulfur, that's another element. And we have oxygen. All right, what about ozone, O3? Did you pick element? I hope so. It's only one type of element. It's just oxygen. There's three of them, but it's just oxygen. Nitrous oxide, N2O, element or compound? Compound, because we have two different elements together, nitrogen and oxygen. Chemical bonds, a force that holds atoms together are called chemical bonds. And atoms bond each other in two ways, by sharing electrons, and when electrons move from one atom to another. Molecules. One or more atoms that are bonded together are called a molecule. Molecules are the smallest part of a compound that keep the same properties of the compound. Here are some examples. We have at the bottom, we have a water molecule, H2O. We're pretty familiar with that. And if I have a lot of H2O molecules, I just have more water. Above that is carbon dioxide, CO2. This is what we breathe out every day. And even above that is an oxygen molecule. Now I know we think that that's an element too, and oxygen is an element, but because there's two atoms combined together, bonded, that also means it's a molecule. Chemical formulas. A chemical formula tells us which element and how many atoms of each element the compound contains. Subscript. This is a small number placed to the right of the element. It tells how many atoms of that element are in the compound. An example is this little two that's written down below on H2O. To understand stand the word subscript, sub means under and script is a type of writing. So this means an underwriting or a below writing. Think about a submarine that is below water. So subscript means under writing. So that little two right there tells us how many hydrogen atoms there are. So this says there's two of the hydrogen atoms. For the O, there's no number beside it, so we consider that to be a one there. So that means that we have one oxygen atom. So if we looked at this as a molecule, we would see there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. Let's look at the chemical formula for salt, NaCl. How many atoms do we have here? We have Na, which is sodium, and Cl, which is chlorine. And there's no little subscripts beside them, so that means we have one of each. One atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. Try this one. Pause if you need to. This is sand, which formula is SiO2. That's Si for silicon and O for oxygen. How many atoms? one atom of silicon and two atoms of oxygen. The little two beside the O says there's two of those oxygens. There's no number beside the silicon, so that means there's still only one of those. Chalk, try this one. 
chalk is CaCO3, Ca for calcium and C for carbon, and an O for oxygen. And just to take a step back, notice that that A is little or lowercase, so we know that it's part, it goes with that C that comes before it, so it's Ca for calcium. How many atoms do we have of each of these? We have one atom of calcium, one atom of carbon, and three atoms of oxygen. Once again, note beside that O is a subscript number three, telling us there's three oxygen atoms. The other ones have no numbers beside them, and that means there's one of each of those. Coefficients. The number in front of the formula it tells the number of molecules or atoms in the equation. So here we see in front of this H2O, there's a big number two, and that means that you have two molecules of water. Here's our two molecules of water. So now you should be able to count up how many hydrogens and how many oxygens there would be. So two hydrogens and one oxygen on the first water molecule and two hydrogen and one oxygen on the second means that we have four hydrogen and two oxygen total. So let's do some practice. Note, if there is no subscript, there is only one atom for that element. So our example here is three CO2s. So we could write it out below, CO2, CO2, CO2. That would mean that there were three atoms of carbon and six atoms of oxygen. So what we're doing is multiplying the coefficient by the number of atoms. Three times the C, and remember there's a one there beside the C, so three times one is three. And the O has a 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, 6 atoms of oxygen. Let's try another one. Go ahead and see if you can get exactly how many atoms of nitrogen and hydrogen there are in this example. There are two NH4s, so if I write it out, an NH4 and an NH4, I could count them up. Two atoms of nitrogen and eight atoms of hydrogen. I can also do my multiplication and say two times the one that was beside the N that we can't see means two atoms of nitrogen and two times four, the subscript beside the hydrogen is eight for the number of hydrogen atoms. So two atoms of nitrogen and eight atoms of hydrogen. Take some time to name each element in the chemical formula below and how many atoms are in each. This is some good practice. If you can do this easily, you've got the hang of this. Go ahead and pause your screen and practice. All right, let's go over your answers. The first one, C9H8, O4. This means there's nine atoms of carbon, eight atoms of hydrogen, and four atoms of oxygen. Notice beside each one there was one of those subscripts to tell you exactly how many atoms there were. And there were not any, even any without any subscripts that you had to figure out that there was one of them. Let's look at number two. Two SiO2. Notice there's a coefficient in the front and a subscript after the O. That means there's two atoms of silicon and four atoms of oxygen. Remember, if I multiply, I have to remember that there's at least one silicon there, even though there's not a number or a subscript beside it. And two times one would be two atoms of silicon and two times two for four atoms of oxygen. CaCO3, number three. There'd be one atom of calcium, one atom of carbon, and three atoms of oxygen. Number four, two H2O2s. This would be four atoms of hydrogen and four atoms of oxygen. Remember, your coefficient has to multiply by the subscript. Number five, 
3 CH4. 3 atoms of carbon and 12 atoms of hydrogen. No subscript beside the C, so 3 times 1 is 3 for 3 atoms of carbon, and 4 is the subscript for hydrogen, so 3 times 4 is 12 for 12 atoms of hydrogen. 4 N2O. 8 atoms of nitrogen, 4 atoms of oxygen. Number 7, 3 CO2. 3 atoms of carbon, 6 atoms of oxygen. And number 8, CaF2. 1 atom of calcium and 2 atoms of fluorine. Chemical changes and equations. Chemical changes. A chemical change is a change in matter that produces a new substance. You know a chemical change has happened if you observe one or more of the following. A color change, gas production, fizzing and bubbles. Number three, a change in temperature. Or number four, light is produced. Let's think of some examples of chemical changes that we might see. For example, let's go back to burning a match. If I burn a match, we see a color change. We probably saw some gas production in the form of some smoke. We had a temperature change and light is produced. So that's an example of all four. But let's say, for example, let's look for some ones that are more simple and maybe only have one example of one of these chemical changes. An example might be adding an Alka-Seltzer tablet into water and it begins to fizz and bubble. This would be something, something that we would say has gas production. Therefore, a chemical change is occurring. Maybe it could be adding, adding baking soda and vinegar together, which you've seen probably before, that creates a lot of bubbles. So once again, gas production. But if you hold this in your hand, you'll also feel that there's a temperature change. Most of the time when we talk about chemical changes, they're very hard to reverse. So you might be able to make them go one way, but it's hard to make them to go the other. Let's look at that match again, or even a piece of paper. It's very easy to burn a piece of paper, but can you unburn a piece of paper? Can you take all the ashes and all the gas that's come off and get it back to form that same original piece of paper that you had before? No, that's impossible. So a chemical change often goes easily in one direction, but not easily in its off opposite direction. Chemical equations. A chemical equation is a short way to show chemical reactions using symbols instead of words. It shows how the atoms rearrange. This equation says Pb plus O2 yields PbO2. The Pb is lead and the O is oxygen. And if I had to write out the words lead and oxygen each time in this, it would take a lot more time than just writing the symbols. That's one of the reasons that we write them this way. Parts of a chemical equation. The left side is called the reactants. It's what you start with. We have an arrow that represents the words yields it's like an equal sign in math. And then finally, the right side is what is formed, or your product. Let's look at some examples. 2Ag plus S yields Ag2S. Label the product and reactants in your notes. Reactants on the left side, what you start with products on the right side, what you end with. How many atoms does each side of the equation have? On the left side, two as a coefficient in front of the Ag. That means there's two Ag atoms. And then plus S, sulfur, and there's only one of those. That means there's three on the left side. On the right side, 
we have Ag2, which also means two silver atoms. And then the S for sulfur only has one. So that means three atoms on the right side, three on the reactant side, and three on the product side. Is the equation balanced? Does it have the same number of atoms on each side? And are those numbers the same? For example, is it the same number of silver atoms on the reactant side as the product side? Yes, they both have two silver atoms on the reactant side and the product side, and they have one sulfur atom on the reactant side and one on the product side. So this is a balanced equation. It's equal. Each side is equal to the other side. Example number two, Na plus Cl2 yields NaCl. Label the product and reactant. Reactants on the left, product on the right. How many atoms does each side of the equation have? Pause if you need to. On the reactant side, in A, there's one. We don't have a coefficient or a subscript. For CLs, there's a subscript of two, so that means two CLs. So on the reactant side, we have one sodium, two chlorines. On the product side, there's NaCl. That means one sodium, one chlorine. That's a sodium chloride molecule or salt. So do they have the same number of atoms on each side? No. There's three on the reactant side and two on the product side. Is the equation balanced? Clearly not. There are sodium atoms on both sides, one on each, but the chlorine atoms, there's two on the reactant side and one on the product. So this is not a balanced equation. Here's a really complex example where you need to spend some time counting out the number of atoms. So label the products and reactants and then determine how many molecules are on each side for each type of atom and then determine if it's balanced. Pause your screen when you're ready to do this and unpause when you're ready to start again. The left side is the reactants and the right side is the products. How many atoms does each side of the equation have? There should have been 14 on the reactant side and 14 on the product side. You have to be really careful here because like, for example, the carbons on the reactant side, they're in different places. Here we can see there are two carbons, but over here's another one hiding in the middle of this molecule. That makes three carbons. On the product side, here's two carbons, and then here's a carbon all by himself. So the carbons are balanced on both sides. The hydrogens, there's four here another here, making five. And on this side, there's three here and two here, making five. The oxygens, there's two here and three here, making five. And over here, there's two. Don't forget that there's a one right here. It's just invisible. One plus another two here, making five. So the oxygens are also balanced. Lastly, the sodium. There's one sodium here and one sodium on the product side. So there's 14 on both sides. The carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, and sodiums all have equal amounts on both sides of the equation. So is the equation balanced? Yes. Thanks for learning today with Beakers and Ink. Remember, you can always go back and review the video to practice more or to get things that you didn't get the first time. Have a great day.